20 days away from the fiscal cliff deadline, and we continue to bring both sides of the aisle to sit down together. Congressman Sander Levin is a Democrat from Michigan. He is a ranking member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Also, Congressman Scott Garrett is a Republican from New Jersey. He's the vice chairman of the House Budget Committee and a member of the House Financial Services Committee. And gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We just sat down with Senators Conrad and Corker, and surprisingly, they seem to agree on a lot of areas. One of those areas is that they think we need to negotiate up from this point, not down from this point, and cut some sort of a deal that is $4 trillion or greater when you add up the spending cuts and tax increases. So, Congressman Levin, would you agree with a package like that, going up from these numbers, not down? No, I think we, go, we should go up. The question is when. My view is, first things first, we have to pass the middle class tax cut. That's half of the potential impact of the, economic, of, of the cliff. Half. Then what we need to do is reach a decision and not, not renew the upper income tax cuts. That's a trillion dollars over 10 years. We have to make sure we pass unemployment insurance I brought a chart here and it shows the impact, middle class tax cut has the most in terms of impact on the financial cliff. UI is next, unemployment, insurance. unemployment right. insurance, because when people receive it, they spend it. And two million people, if we don't act, are going to lose their unemployment insurance January 1, their federal benefits. All of a sudden, it's gone. Also, the physician, uh, uh, the physician uh, reimbursement has to be handled. And also, the AMT. Yeah, don't forget AMT. You're talking don't, about don't, don't forget AMT. Dealing with that. Because if we postpone it and go into next year, it's chaos. Right. So we need to act first steps first. I think we need to do the entitlement issue, but we can't do it all at once. If we try to do it all at once, I'm afraid we go over the cliff, and we should not do that. Right. Congressman Garrett, I know that you're committed to an issue that says that spending that's a problem, not revenues. There you go. Our state has been hit by a storm that yeah. may be worse than Hurricane Andrew. Okay. It requires spending. Do you veto that spending on principle? So at this point in time, we've just got the, the president's proposal as the uh, 60 some odd billion dollars. The uh, governor said they were looking for more of that. That's just coming over to both the House and the Senate for to take a look at those numbers. And I think in those numbers, I think it's appropriate for Congress to take a look at them, see exactly what the states are looking for, to also look for what I was asking for that we never got with Katrina, and that was some degree of accountability. You remember all the stories about the uh, FEMA trailers, about the uh, credit debit cards, whatever they were at that time, just giving it out to people all across the country, even if they're not in those areas. I think the American public wants to make sure that there is that level of accountability accountability going into this sort of thing. But you raise a good point as far as we're at $239 billion in deficit, I think, in the first couple of months of this year, and they're talking about adding $60 billion on top of that. Right. See, I'm trying to figure out what kind of spending is good and what kind of spend spending is bad, or is all spending bad? Because we know that there are a lot of people in Congress who are committed to cutting spending, but when you ask them about it, as we have this morning, so, they've got different, they pledge their constituency to not increase taxes. Yeah. They seem very committed to the idea of cutting spending, but if New Jersey doesn't get that spend, even yeah. if it's a little bit wasteful, for heaven's sake, yeah. we're really going to be hurt. Sure. So, so one person's stimulus is another person's wasteful spending. So the president talked time and time again, aside from the issue of the, of the uh, Katrina spending or the uh, Sandy spending, the president has spoken time and time again, we need additional stimulus is spending. Well, we saw how well that has worked out the last couple of times, seven or eight hundred billion dollars spent and not producing any jobs Can out of it. And so that's here? the problem, is that when the government spends money in a lot of these other so-called infrastructure investments and stimulus, it ends up wasting money, taking from the private sector, not creating jobs. If the idea okay. is that the government's able to spend this money better than the private sector, I have a real question with now that. Let me break in. I just came from Michigan. There's been a resurgence in the auto industry. There was federal money that went into it. Without federal money, Chrysler and GM would have gone bust. Yeah, look what was that look, expenditure? Look, look, no, just like so, AIG turned out to be no, pretty no, good. No, no, exactly. So, so, so your <laughs> position is... So let, let me finish. Let me finish. So you just talk about it's all wasted. That's not, not true. Me, I, That's not stuff. true. Some of it is well spent. And I think you should answer your question. Sandy, not named after me, no, had a major impact on the East Coast. Yes. There's been a request 
for help from the federal government. I'm all in favor of accountability. Yeah. But at some point, you're going to have to... Did you ask for that accountability with Katrina? I don't think so. Well... And did you see that money get wasted? I don't think so. I, so it's your constituents who are paying for that wasteful money. And if you come here today and tell your constituents you really don't care. Oh, no, 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 look, You're I, good to do it. I'm saying go I'm for in it. favor of accountability. We need, Jersey. we need congressmen from Jersey to speak up for the state, sir. That's look, exactly look, I, look, I, That's look, exactly I'm it. in favor of accountability. Let's oh, okay. have a con Are you going to vote? Okay, so after, gonna... no, let me finish. Okay. After accountability is built in, will you vote yes or no? Yeah. If, yes, yes or no? I will be supportive of legislation once we have the accountability. Okay. I'm glad to come really here gonna, because gonna, he's going to work with me on the accountability. Fantastic. I, absolutely. Okay. And I'll make sure that the people in New Jersey and New York are not left high and dry. Thank you. Because it's Thank a you. national issue. When there's an emergency, we just don't all say everybody on their own, which is often your theory. No, everybody in this country isn't always on their own. We are a national community. And when there's a tragedy, when there's some kind of event in New Jersey, New York, we all have a responsibility. Accountability, we don't use that as a dodge for not saying let's act. The auto industry would have been on its, just, just destroyed. About a million and a half jobs, I might take to get close price for the so, If so we had, your position, and we excuse, had accountability. Excuse, let, me, let me get a word in here. I, 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 I know you want to dominate the conversation. I don't but, want. I want you to get to the point. Well, the point was that you and I now agree that there should be additional language in this legislation to have accountability. And that is a great, so far there is not that level. There wasn't in the past when you voted for the last uh, spending of over $100 billion on uh, a bailout to the states in this area. So it's good that we moved that point, And I will look forward to working with you to provide oh, that good. accountability. And there was a accountability in terms of help for GM and Chrysler. Right. As for AIG. Look at that. Jim. There was accountability. Like so, so, Jim, so, Jim, and, and, and people like Scott said, said, said 20, 20, 20, 20, we're each on their own. Let, let, so let, how let much them money were you investing in AIG when the government was buying, was doing at that time? Uh, AIG was saved, and that was really important for so the public. So were you personally investing in it at that time when the government I'm was... I'm at a 48 percent effective tax rate, and I'm not... In, I'm not no, 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 no. Wait, my question to you is, when the government was going in and bailing out AIG, were you also and personally encouraging your viewers to go in and buy AIG at that point in time, or were you saying now is not the time to no, buy AIG? No, I was recommending AIG. I thought it was a really good deal after the stock came public again. It oh, was no, no, after the, no, after the stock paid Well, there was no stock to trade. How can I recommend? So, there was nothing to trade. So the point is, if the government does such a great job on in these bailouts, then maybe we should have the government be involved in all of these things, like Solyndra and the rest. Uh, so why should we have... So maybe we should... I don't want facts. Maybe... Oh, so... It's, I want the so state, state so to get paid because I got a lot of people in shelters. Do you honestly believe that the government is, does a better job of picking winners and losers in the private sector? No, but the government doesn't want to achieve a good No, no, let me just... Let me do this winners and losers. When there's a loser, yeah. we have, like like when there's a storm like Sandy, losers, we have to step up to the plate. And let's get back to the main issue, and that, to, to the main issue, and that is the cliff. But Sandy, In terms of accountability. Where you, said, where you said first things first and you want to see the tax increases before you go along with spending cuts, that is a non-starter with no. the other side of the it, aisle. It isn't a non-starter. It is a non-starter. Let, we have let, been, let, we, let, let me finish. No, no, uh, you always want to finish, but the, let me just say this. We have Are you going to vote for the middle class tax cut? I will vote for that. First of all, there is no middle class tax cut. There is no big, in, a high tax cut. At the, the tax rates do not go down. We have current tax rates here, and if we pass this bill jointly, the tax rates stay here. No one is suggesting that the tax rates for the middle class... Look, if we don't class, act... No, they so go wait, let's up. get the term of... Oh, 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 you said that you, or do you want a middle class tax cut. No one is suggesting that the taxes go down. So you're misleading the viewers when you say that there's actually a possibility. If we don't tax. act, the taxes go up oh, for the middle that's class. That's not what you were saying a moment ago. So act, what we're all we suggesting is that the tax rates should not go up anyway. I'm just quoting from President uh, Obama when he was Kennedy Obama. He said that during a recession or bad economic times is not the time to raise taxes on anyone. I know we had a so national election. Why we had a national election. Yeah. The president yeah. took his position. Uh, uh, I, the people are for it. We should we okay. should extend the middle class tax cut and not the upper. Right, I, I can only be rude on Mad Money. I can't be rude on this show. Less, <laughs> Congress, 
Justin Garrett from New Jersey yes, and sir. Congressman Thank from Michigan. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank All right. Great to have you. We'll be on the show when you be, we'll be on the show when you be rude. I got to do this show thing. Yeah. This mission continues. We've got much more from Capitol Hill this morning at 